Elegy number 19. Whoever loves, if he do not propose the right true end of love, he's one that goes to see for nothing but to make him sick. Love is a bare whelp born. If we o'er lick our love and force it new strange shapes to take, we err, and of a lump a monster make. We are not a calf, a monster, that were grown, faced like a man, though better than his own. Perfection is in unity. Prefer one woman first, and then one thing in her. I, when I value gold, may think upon the ductileness, the application, the wholesomeness, the ingenuity, from rust, from soil, from fire, ever free. But if I love it, tis because tis made by our new nature, use, the soul of trade. All this in women we might think upon, if women had them, and yet love but one. Can men more injure women than to say they love them for that by which they are not they? Makes virtue, woman, must I cool my blood till I both be and find one wise and good? May barren angels love so, but if we make love to woman, virtue is not she, as beauty is not, nor wealth. He that strays thus from her to hers is more adulterous than if he took her maid. Search every sphere and firmament, our Cupid is not there. He is an infernal god, and underground with Pluto dwells, where gold and fire abound. Men to such gods their sacrificing coals did not on altars lay, but pits and holes. Although we see celestial bodies move above the earth, the earth we till and love, so we, her heirs, contemplate words and heart and virtues. But we love the centric part. Nor is the soul more worthy or more fit for love than this, as infinite as it. But in attaining this desired place, how much they err that set out at the face. The hair of foresties of ambushes, of springes, snares, fetters, and manacles. The brow becomes us when tis smooth and plain, and when tis wrinkled, shipwrecks us again. Smooth tis a paradise, where we would have immortal stay, but wrinkled tis a grave. The nose, like to the first meridian, runs not twixt an east and west, but twixt two suns. It leaves a cheek, a rosy hemisphere on either side, and then directs us where upon the islands fortunate we fall, not faint canaries, but ambrosial, her swelling lips, to which when we are come, we anchor there, and think ourselves at home, for they seem all. Their siren songs and their wise Delphic oracles do fill the ear. There, in a creek where chosen pearls do swell, the remora her cleaving tongue doth dwell. These and the glorious promontory her chin o'erpassed, and the straight Hellespont between the Cestos and Abydos of her breasts, not of two lovers, but two loves the nests, succeeds a boundless sea. But yet thine eyes some island moles may scatter there descry, and sailing towards her India, in that way shall at her fair Atlantic navel stay. Though there the current be the pilot made, yet ere thou be where thou shouldst be embayed, thou shalt upon another forest set, where many shipwreck, and no further get. When thou art there, Consider what this chase misspent by thy beginning at the face. Rather set out below, practice thy art. Some symmetry the foot hath with that part which thou dost seek, and is thy map for that, lovely enough to stop, but not stay at. Least subject to disguise and change it is. Men say the devil never can change his. It is the emblem that hath figured firmness. Tis the first part that comes to bed. 
Civility we see refined. The kiss which at the face began, transplanted is, since to the hand, since to the imperial knee, now at the papal foot delights to be. If kings think that the nearer way, and do rise from the foot, lovers may do so too. For as free spheres move faster far than can birds whom the air resists, so may that man which goes this empty and ethereal way, than if at beauty's elements he stay. Rich nature in women wisely made two purses, and their mouths aversely laid. They then, which to the lower tribute owe, that way which that exchequer looks must go. He which doth not, his error is as great as who by clister gives the stomach meat. Elegy number nine, the autumnal. No spring nor summer beauty hath such grace as I have seen in one autumnal face. Young beauties force our love, and that's a rape. This doth but counsel, yet you cannot scape. If twere a shame to love, here twere no shame. Affections here take reverence's name. Where her first years the golden age, that's true, but now their gold oft tried and ever new. That was her torrid and inflaming time, this is her tolerable tropic clime. Fair eyes, who asks more heat than comes from hence? He in a fever wishes pestilence. Call not these wrinkles graves. If graves they were, they were love's graves, for else he is nowhere. Yet lies not love dead here, but here doth sit, vowed to this trench like an anachorite, and here, till hers, which must be his death come, he doth not dig a grave, but build a tomb. Here dwells he, though he sojourn everywhere in progress, yet his standing house is here. Here, where still evening is, not noon nor night, where no voluptuousness, yet all delight. In all her words, unto all hearers fit, you may at revels, you at council sit. This is love's timber, youth his underwood. There he as wine in June enrages blood, which then comes seasonablest when our taste and appetite to other things is past. Xerxes' strange Lydian love, the platan tree, was loved for age, none being so large as she. Or else because, being young, nature did bless her youth with age's glory, barrenness. If we love things long sought, age is a thing which we are fifty years encompassing. If transitory things which soon decay, age must be loveliest at the latest day. But name not winter faces, whose skins slack, lank as an unthrift's purse, but a soul's sack, whose eyes seek light within, for all here's shade, whose mouths are holes, rather worn out than made, whose every tooth to a several place is gone, to vex their souls at resurrection. Name not these living death-heads unto me, for these not ancient, but antique be. I hate extremes, yet I had rather stay with tombs than cradles to wear out a day. Since such love's motion natural is, may still my love descend and journey down the hill, not panting after growing beauties. So I shall ebb out with them who homeward go. Elegy number 20, to his mistress going to bed. Come, madam, come, all rest my powers defy. Until I labour, I in labour lie. The foe, oft times having the foe in sight, is tired with standing, though he never fight. Off with that girdle, like heaven's zone glittering, but a far fairer world encompassing. Unpin that spangled breastplate which you wear, that the eyes of busy fools may be stopped there. Unlace yourself, for that harmonious chime tells me from you that now it is bedtime. 
Off with that happy busk, which I envy, that still can be, and still can stand so nigh. Your gown going off such beauteous state reveals, as when from flowery meads the hill's shadow steals. Off with your wiry coronet, and show the hairy diadems which on you do grow. Off with your hose and shoes, then softly tread in this love's hallowed temple, this soft bed. In such white robes, heaven's angels used to be revealed to men. Thou, angel, bringst with thee a heaven like Mohammed's paradise. And though ill spirits walk in white, we easily know by this these angels from an evil sprite. Those set our hairs, but these our flesh upright. Licence my roving hands, and let them go before, behind, between, above, below. O oh, my America, my new-found land, my kingdom, safest when with one man manned, my mine of precious stones, my empery, how am I blessed in thus discovering thee? To enter in these bonds is to be free. Then where my hand is set, my soul shall be full nakedness. All joys are due to thee, as souls unbodied, bodies unclothed must be to taste whole joys. Gems which you women use are like Atlanta's ball cast in men's views, that when a fool's eye lighteth on a gem, his earthly soul might court that, not them. Like pictures, or like books gay coverings made for laymen, are all women thus arrayed? Themselves are only mystic books, which we, whom their imputed grace will dignify, must see revealed. Then, since that I may know, as liberally as to thy midwife show thyself, cast all, yea, this white linen hence, there is no penance due to innocence. To teach thee, I am naked first, why then, what needs thou have more covering than a man? At the round earth's imagined corners blow your trumpets, angels, and arise, arise from death, you numberless infinities of souls, and to your scattered bodies go. All whom the flood did and fire shall o'erthrow, all whom war, death, age, agues, tyrannies, despair, law, chance hath slain, and you whose eyes shall behold God and never taste death's woe. But let them sleep, Lord, and me mourn a space, for if above all these my sins abound, Tis late to ask abundance of thy grace when we are there. Here on this lowly ground, teach me how to repent, for that's as good as if thou hast sealed my pardon with thy blood. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which but thy picture be, much pleasure, then from thee much more must flow, and soonest our best men with thee do go, rest of their bones and souls delivery. Thou'rt slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men, and dost with poison, war, and sickness dwell, and poppy or charms can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke. Why swell'st thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Batter my heart, three-personed God, for you as yet but knock, 
breathe, shine, and seek to mend, that I may rise and stand, o'erthrow me, and bend your force to break, blow, burn, and make me new. I, like a usurped town to another due, labour to admit you, but oh, to no end. Reason your viceroy in me, me should defend, but is captived and proves weak or untrue. Yet dearly I love you, and would beloved fain, but am betrothed unto your enemy. Divorce me, untie, or break that knot again. Take me to you, imprison me, for I, except you enthrall me, never shall be free, nor ever chaste, except you ravish me. A Hymn to Christ at the Author's Last Going into Germany In what torn ship soever I embark, that ship shall be my emblem of thy ark. What sea soever swallow me, that flood shall be to me an emblem of thy blood. Though thou with clouds of anger do disguise thy face, yet through that mask I know those eyes which, though they turn away sometimes, they never will despise. I sacrifice this island unto thee, and all whom I love there, and who love me. When I have put our seas twixt them and me, put thou thy seas betwixt my sins and thee. As the tree's sap doth seek the root below in winter, in my winter now I go, where none but thee, the eternal root of true love, I may know. Nor thou nor thy religion dost control the amorousness of an harmonious soul, but thou wouldst have that love thyself. As thou art jealous, Lord, so I am jealous now. Thou lovest not till from loving more thou free my soul. Whoever gives takes liberty. Oh, if thou carest not whom I love, alas, thou lovest not me. Seal then this bill of my divorce to all on whom those fainter beams of love did fall. Marry those loves which in youth scattered be on fame, wit, hopes, false mistresses to thee. Churches are best for prayer that have least light. To see God only, I go out of sight. And to escape stormy days, I choose an everlasting night. Him to God, my God, in my sickness. Since I am coming to that holy room, where with thy choir of saints forevermore I shall be made thy music, as I come I tune the instrument here at the door, and what I must do then, think here before. Whilst my physicians by their love are grown cosmographers, and I their map, who lie flat on this bed, that by them may be shown that this is my southwest discovery, per fretum febris, by these straits to die. I joy that in these straits I see my west. For though those currents yield return to none, what shall my west hurt me? As east and west in all flat maps, and I am one, are one, so death doth touch the resurrection. Is the Pacific Sea my home, or are the eastern riches? Is Jerusalem, Anyan, and Magellan, and Gibraltar, all straits, and none but straits, are ways to them, whether where Japhet dwelt, or Cham, or Shem. We think that Paradise and Calvary, 
Christ's cross and Adam's tree stood in one place. Look, Lord, and find both Adams met in me. As the first Adam's sweat surrounds my face, may the last Adam's blood my soul embrace. So in his purple wrapped receive me, Lord. By these his thorns give me his other crown. And as to other souls I preach thy word, be this my text, my sermon to mine own. Therefore, that he may raise, the Lord throws down. A Hymn to God the Father Wilt thou forgive that sin where I begun, which was my sin, though it were done before? Wilt thou forgive that sin through which I run, and do run still, though still I do deplore? When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more. Wilt thou forgive that sin which I have won others to sin, and made my sin their door? Wilt thou forgive that sin which I did shun a year or two, but wallowed in a score? When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more. I have a sin of fear, that when I have spun my last thread, I shall perish on the shore. But swear by thyself, that at my death thy sun shall shine as he shines now and heretofore. And having done that, thou hast done. I fear no more.